Welcome back to Bailiwick Against the Shipwrecks. I'm JP Fallace and today's a recovery mission. So it's a last minute phone call. Uh, actually, yesterday afternoon I was uh, riding around doing my site visits and all of a sudden a phone call comes through and it's my cousin and he's decided to lose the prop off of his uh, speedboat in Marble Bay. So today, fingers crossed, and it is fingers crossed because propellers are just so small, they're almost impossible to find on the seabed unless they're on really soft white sand with, uh, and they're really shiny. This one I'm guessing is going to be shiny but it's probably not on soft sand uh, and to be honest when a propeller spins itself off it could just go flying anywhere so fingers crossed we find it. Just waiting for Bessie to come down now we'll load the boat up and we'll get out there. What's the gun? Afternoon. Afternoon. Let's go park the car. heading down here to round about Marble Bay, Telegraph Bay. So Lee put his foot down and the propeller basically just spun off. It's as simple as that. Eh? Yeah, simple as that. Just spun off. <laughs> oh well. We're here for uh, our diver trainer from Keeney's paid up trying to find a needle in a haystack. Fingers crossed. Welcome back below the waves, I'm JP Fallies, and we are looking for a propeller. Now, I've looked for a few propellers in the past and none have really put pulled off, to be honest. Um, they are so small, so hard to find. So again, I'm not put down by uh, not being able to find them. We're gonna have another look. I'm gonna do my best to find it. Straight off the bat, it's looking very promising because if the seabed's like this around here, you know, we might stand a chance. I was a bit worried there'd be a load of this green uh, sea lettuce and, you know, be very hard, or even worse, on a reef. So, looking good so far, but what are we looking for? I think this is Betsy. Oh, she's jumping. So Bessie's got a toy as well as the boat we're on. And he's lost one of these. This is a cleaver prop. Very expensive. And I think it's from America. And it's been blueprinted, etc, etc. And I think it's a couple of thousand pounds for a new one. And a long way. Because we're a long way away from America. As you can tell, there is a little bit of current. I'm just outside Marble Bay or Telegraph Bay, um, probably between both. I'm just out where the tide's starting to push. It's pushing me in a southerly direction, and it's not too bad. I can swim back against the tide, but as you can see by the, the particles in the water and the seaweed, it is going south fairly quickly. Probably half a knot, three quarters of a knot. Bessie does know the direction and the rough area he was in when the propeller come off. He did try and take a couple of landmarks, um, so he looked back at the land and tried uh, lining a couple of marks through to know roughly where you are. But he's put me down on the same line, the same um, 
that I'm going the opposite way as what he would have travelled. So I'm going to come down this transit line and have a little look. Shows a little bit more what the current's doing, so it's spiralling as it's going along. Oh, there's a small scallop here. Too small, going back. good thing is not everything's against me so I've got a couple of references here I've got the different change in the sand and the direction and I've also got a large uh, head that comes out across the bay so once I go so far south I see the set of rocks and I know I'm too far I'll get picked back up and go back up north again and do the same run again the further south I travel the worse it gets for this this is wireweed it's a native of the Pacific Ocean, and I think it was first recorded in the early 70s in the British Isles. Very common in the Channel Islands, and you get this growing in the shallow water. Can form huge forests, which are quite nice to swim through, and obviously quite good for fish protection. Also now we've come so far south, we're going to see some eel grass in between this. This wild weed is deadly for boat owners because they basically get sucked up the intake for the coolant and because it's like wire it just gets stuck in there. A few boats have had to dive on lately actually, have had some of this wild weed pulled up inside the intake. And there you go, it's a prime example of them protecting small pollock. They love it. Obviously looking for a propeller in this stuff is going to be quite awkward. And to top it off, it does seem to be getting a little bit thicker. The density of this seaweed seems to be getting a bit thicker. But what I am expecting is a nice shiny prop. So given the fact that we've got good sunlight and shallow water, it should glisten at me. And I say it should, as long as I can see it. If you notice now, I've turned a, turned back into the tide, and now I'm going to try and check beyond these big throngs of uh, sargassum, this wireweed. So basically, I need to sort of um, manoeuvre myself around. Bear in mind, I've got my bag with my, um, my string that goes back up to my buff, so obviously I can't just swim straight under these because uh, that will get tangled, and before long I'll be in a right mess with weed trying to pull me backwards. So I'm trying to manoeuvre myself up and over and around these bits of weed to try and have a look behind them and under them. Been 10 minutes, it's only 7 metres of water. I'm trying to use my compass to try and figure out which way I want to go next. Um, really, to be honest, I don't really want to be around here.
Right, we've hit the reef, so we're going to have to go back to the surface. I'm running very low on air. I think I'm going to have to pop all the way back to the harbour to get another tank. Another tank of air secured. We are going back to the same location, slightly further north and also slightly shallower. And this is what I didn't want, this green, horrible sea lettuce. And also, another thing that's kind of helping us in a way is this reef to my right-hand side. So. To my, um, to my right now is uh, going west and that kind of separates the bay in a way so I don't think it's in this seaweed but I can't be too sure to be honest it might be worth having a little look around in between the reefs but to be honest if it's on top of this reef I think I'm going to have to come back at the end of winter because look at the seaweed there's no way you'd find it in this and the same for this green stuff this could quite easily hide a, uh, a 12 inch or one foot or 300 millimeter propeller inside it quite quite comfortably especially as it's been at least one or two tides maybe three tides since he lost the propeller so yeah it could be covered but that's not going to deter me i'm going to carry on i'm going to keep having a look i'm going to uh, weave in between all these reefs and see if we can find it
Right, as it appeared that I was out the tide again, it almost made me feel like I'd swum into the bay too far. So I kind of knew I was off the transit line I wanted to be on. So I've been back to the surface, Lee's picked me up and run me back up north again. And we are now trying to come back down through this l the same line that he left the bay on. Fingers crossed, we find on this attempt, take three. There is a couple of crab pot buffs on the surface, which is kind of where we want to be. So if I don't see any crab pots soon, I'm getting a bit worried. I'll probably do... Ah, there we go. Yep, this is where we need to be. Someone's got a few spider crabs in there. A couple of lot of keepers. Now if you check out the rope, the rope is heading south with the tide, so it means I've, I want to be on the inside of this, on the west side, and I want to just carry on down the same direction as this. Right, I'm back on this soft sand, which is probably what I didn't want, to be honest. So that means I'm quite down further south than I probably should be, and probably a bit too close into the bay as well. I'll take a little, a couple of minutes, three, four minutes, just scat, scatting this area out. But I know I can go left because that's the reef. And on the right hand side as well, there's a reef. So I'm right in the corner now. Um, I mean, I'm going to have to take a look here because I can't leave any area unchecked. It always worries me when there's a load of fish swimming in the opposite direction that I'm going in. Makes me think that something's chasing them. Just hope it's not a shark. Or probably worse, a big seal. I've got a real bad thought that um, the propeller is actually in this reef. So I'm going to go on top of this reef and have a little look around. And look from above to see if there's any anything from above. fair few of them now starting to congregate but it's that time of year where they are actually coming in now I've seen them in more and more locations which is really good because when these come in you normally see pollock and you normally see bass and you normally see flatfish and all the other stuff that comes with it these normally show up when it's about 15 degrees sea temperature and they kind of bang on the money because it's, it's just turned 15 I just see something shiny then. Ah, I did see something shiny, but look, it's a mother of pearl of an old or Michelle. Bit small to be a propeller, but sometimes when you just get that little glisten in the corner of your eye, you gotta check it out. feel myself now getting pulled by the tide again so I think I'm in the right location just outside the bay just enough plenty of spider crabs hidden inside here as well all down in between the crevices this propeller is actually turning out to be a phantom propeller so the name of the boat is a phantom and the fact I can't find the thing is also living up to its name. It certainly is a phantom propeller. And I'm running low on air now so I've probably only got about three or four minutes left. This was a 15 litre tank and I've done a lot of swimming.
I think this is going to be a big no, because if the propellers landed in here, I don't think I'm ever going to see it ever again. I think it's time I got off this reef and headed back out onto the sand. I think I might actually do one more drop, because I feel like I'm well away from where I need to be. I've got next to nowhere left. And I've been half an hour on this dive. That went pretty quick. Whilst I've got a bit of air left, I'm going to go back up and do one more drop. Right, oh, we should be bang on that transit line again. Probably expecting to see that crab pot soon ish. We'll see. Got to take a bearing. Should be going south. Let's head in this direction. Tide's actually getting stronger. Yep, definitely getting stronger. Down back to the seal grass. Fingers crossed it's not this far down. Oh, I'm going to have to swim back up against this tide. I can see it. Oh well. Good thing is I haven't got the bag with me now. So, should be able to do it no problem. Starting to breathe a bit heavy now, trying to swim against this. Quite mesmerising watching this stuff move everywhere. I am well and truly into the red on my air now. I'm going to give it two more minutes to go up. Yeah, I was quite happy when I found it. After doing about an hour and ten minutes swimming everywhere. Right, I don't know if this bush in the middle is pressed in or stuff's going to fall out, so... Doesn't look like it. I reckon I'll run a rope through that and put it on the lift bag. This thing is mega, mega sharp. Put a hole straight from my dive suit quite easily. Let's get my lift bag out. Randomly, when I had it up to the tide there, I wanted to try and turn my hand. <laughs> Rope through the hole, lift bag at the ready. What I do is I just put a little bit of air in it and then swim up with it. I don't want to be losing this. I can't believe how sharp this thing is. Let's just ride this lift bag back up to the surface. Making sure I breathe out, obviously, so I don't get a long injury. <laughs> yes, didn't get the knot, but we got the cleaver prop. <laughs> I run a rope for it, just I didn't know if stuff on the inside was going to fall out, so. Whew. Result. Took two tanks, or one and a bit tanks. 
Needle in a haystack. But anyway, we done it. Not a happy person as well. Home time? Yeah, home time there. <laughs> Thanks a lot for that, John Paul. Nah, not a problem, mate. Not a problem. I was going to give up and then I thought, right, two more minutes. And then I seen it, and I tell you what, I was so excited when I seen it. I wasn't going <laughs> to let you give up. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Would have been back out here Saturday morning. No, Fran wouldn't have been happy. <laughs> she wouldn't have. <laughs> right, okay, cheers for that one, and we'll catch you on the next tide.